Hello, Douglas County. It's Wednesday, August 25th, 2021, and I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County and the Public Information Officer for the Fire Department. Welcome to today's edition of COVID-19 Update with Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Welcome, Dr. Meemark. Hey, Rick. Thanks for having me today. Sure, absolutely. The COVID numbers are continuing to increase. It's not a good thing. Where are we in Douglas County and what can you tell us about hospitalizations, please? Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to back up a little bit, just kind of let you know some of the numbers that we're seeing throughout the state. And then I'll focus in on Douglas a little bit. Um, okay. What we're seeing right now throughout the state of Georgia is that um, over the last 14 days, we've seen a 71 percent increase in numbers. And that's putting us very high right in the realm of that January surge that we had. Um, what is also troubling is the kind of deeper look that we're looking at for children um, that are in school age. And so this is throughout the state. There's a 60 percent increase of children between five and 17 years of age and then a doubling. But if you look even deeper between 11 and 17 and we're having four times as many outbreaks that we, as we did three weeks ago. When we look at the hospitalizations, hospitalizations and deaths have actually more than doubled. And so we went from 295 hospitalizations um, about um, last weekend and up to 669 throughout the state. This is putting a huge strain on our hospital systems throughout the state of Georgia and, and also in the metro. And so bad that the National Guard has been deployed to go help about 10 hospitals at this point. So our state of, of COVID affairs does not seem like it's getting better right now. When we look at Douglas, though, what we are seeing for Douglas County, and I wish I had better news, but the case rate last night was an alarming 845 cases per 100,000. So that is um, eight and a half times higher than what high spread would be. And so we're very concerned about that. Um, we have uh, the positive percentage, percentage rate that has been hovering, and it's about 16.8%. So 16.8% of all um, tests that are being done in Douglas County are coming back positive for COVID. And we all know this is being driven by the Delta surge right now. And so the Delta variant is the one that is um, in almost all cases that are being reported. When we look at hospitalizations um, for Douglas County, the beds are short right now. They have a critical um, um, critically low critical care beds at this time. And so the numbers just keep going up for what we're seeing. And so we are quite concerned and, um, and really hope that um, some measures will, will help to um, bring the cases down. What about vaccinations? Yeah, so vaccinations, um, you know, throughout the nation, there, we're at about 61% for the first dose and 52% are fully vaccinated. Um, Douglas has been making a little bit of progress on that, but um, still 44% for first dose and 38% for fully vaccinated. So it's, um, it's still, you know, we, we have over um, 50% that are not fully vaccinated or more than 60% not fully vaccinated. So that's a lot of folks because Delta likes the unvaccinated. Right. Are unvaccinated people still being hit the hardest in this latest surge? Yeah, if you look at the, the Wellstar, they have some great graphics on this, that over 90% of people that are being hospitalized are unvaccinated. They're seeing younger folks that are being um, hospitalized and, and having a lot of trouble. So this is quite concerning because, you know, our hospital beds are quite strained at this point. And so, um, yeah, it's the people that are dying and the people that are being hospitalized are, are by far um, the unvaccinated. So I know that Cobb and Douglas Public Health continues to offer the COVID vaccine for free at the Douglas Public Health Center on Solomon Drive. How is that going? Yeah, so it's going pretty well. It's, you know, it's uh, Monday through Friday. It's offered eight to five. You can just walk in to get that vaccine. And so I um, just want to make sure it is free that everybody knows. And you can also go to the core locations as well. So we continue. Now it is offered. Um, we offer it for 12 and above um, that can come get the Pfizer vaccine. So how's COVID testing going? So COVID testing is going pretty well. We've increased um, Douglas County's availability for testing. And so um, the senior center um, has some um, location on Tuesday and Thursday from eight to three. And then you can go um, on Saturdays to the health center in the morning, nine to noon to get tested. Deer Lick Park still offers testing Monday through Friday, um, nine to um, eight to four. And, um, and you have to pre-register for that, but we continue to work on testing options for Douglas County. And that's really exciting. We had some, local news media come out as well 
to uh, take coverage of our testing and we see the long line. So I want to say thank you, Douglas County, for getting tested and coming yeah. out to do so. Absolutely. There seems to be a lot of misinformation out there, Dr. Mimar. What can you tell us about this? And are there certain sources you can recommend? Yeah, so, you know, um, I'm really concerned about what I'm hearing. I thought this was an urban legend, um, but apparently this is true and people are actually doing this, uh, but they're taking the, the anti-parasitic medicine, ivermectin. Um, that is really bad. It, it, this is very concerning because um, this is a medicine that's used for roundworm infections or strongyloidiasis um, or um, river blindness or their Norwegian scabies. These are things that it's uh, approved for. And so if you don't have those, you don't need to be taking this medication. It is not approved or suggested for COVID. Absolutely not. And please, please do not go to um, your veterinarian or or your animal supply store and get this medication. That is exceptionally dangerous. These drugs can interact with your other medications. They can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, seizures, and even death. So please, th this is not this is not advisable. This is not real medicine. Um, please do not do this. Um, you know, when you're looking for for guidance, you know that some of the trusted places that you can go to are you know to be able to go to the CDC and Kaiser Foundation, NIH. Um, these are sources, and and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. I know even the county helps to try to get you know true information to folks, and so uh, you know we'll try our best to get you real real information. But please don't um, don't talk to your. I don't know who is telling people to take this medication, but we heard even in our hospitals, people are coming in actually requesting this medication. And that is 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 very dangerous. Please don't do that. Thank you, Dr. Me, Mark. I wasn't aware of that, but uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the FDA, because I understand they recently approved the Pfizer vaccine for ages 16 and up. What does this mean for individuals 12 to 15 years of age? And yeah. what about Moderna and J&J? &J? Yeah, so this is very exciting. So the FDA approved on Monday for Pfizer for 16 and older. And so and that means it has gone through the even, even deeper dive of uh, um, review for FDA approval. So it is on par with your other medications that you take um, to be um, considered safe and effective for um, for against COVID. And so it's great because uh, now it can be released to, to folks um, that um, um, are looking for that FDA approval. But, you know, it's like your, you know, your hypertension medicines and your cholesterol medicines, it's there and available now and it's been approved. They go ahead and they look at the, you know, manufacturing plant, they look at all the data straight through. And so um, we're very excited that that has happened. Um, so that's 16 and older, um, 12 um, and older can still get it under the emergency use authorization. So um, everybody's still offering it. It's just a difference in just kind of labeling and it has a new fancy name for the new um, FDA approval. But um, so so that has already gone through. And we're waiting for Moderna to go through as well as Johnson Johnson. We have not heard of those quite yet. I understand that a booster, a uh, third dose of either Pfizer or Moderna is available right now for immune compromised individuals. When will it be available for everyone? And what is the timing between the second and the third dose? Yeah, so um, so right now, if you have a condition that makes your immune system um, compromised, you should go ahead and get what's called an additional dose of Moderna or Pfizer. These are people that actually like have are um, have active cancer happening right now, who have had a transplant, solid organ or bone marrow transplant, um, or immune deficiencies that would make your immune system weaker than others, or you're on medications that like Humira or something like that that would um, make it so that you um, your immune system is not as strong. All those folks are recommended to go ahead and get the additional dose now. Um, now the third dose, the booster dose, is a little bit different. The president announced that I think a couple of weeks ago that is coming sometime in September. We are still awaiting the FDA and CDC kind of approval for those, but we're getting ready right now. And so though that third dose, um, why this is so important right now, and this, this ties into kind of what's happening in our community and things that we're seeing, is that there's some data showing that your immunity may be going down in about six months, eight months. 
And so we are seeing breakthrough infections. So people that are vaccinated um, um, are getting some, some cases are coming through. And, and you know, when your other um, immunizations, there's a timeline. That's why you take these boosters and, you know, you do your flu shot every year, those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. And so the recommendation is that at eight months after your second dose, you should get the booster shot to boost up your, your immunity to COVID. And so this is very important. So one is, you know, when it gets released in September, everybody is ready to get, dig out your card. And, you know, if you need to get a new car, go ahead and request that. Do all your things that you need to do and get ready. And then, you know, and find locations that will be offering the, the vaccine. So we'll be offering both Moderna and Pfizer so that you can get the booster shot if you need. Eight months after the second dose. Um, but also what is important though is if you know if immunity may be going down, we also need to be very careful right now too. So I got my vaccine at the end of December, beginning of January, and that puts me like right at that eight month mark, right? Yeah. And with cases so very high right now and transmission very high and hospital beds short, I'm being very cautious. So whenever I go out and, you know, indoor places, I'm, I'm masked up, I'm avoiding crowds, washing my hands, all those kind of things so that I don't get a breakthrough. I know two personal friends that have gotten breakthrough infections and, and, and they, you know, they didn't get hospitalized, but man, they were really sick and I don't like getting sick. So, um, so just exercise caution until we get to that point where we can get you boosted up. Awesome, awesome. Good information, Dr. Meanmark. Is there anything else you would like to say to the residents of Douglas County? You know, I, I know that this is tough that, you know, we are reaching um, probably the highest point that we've been at. And, you know, there's some takeaways that are really important. Vaccines save lives and, and will, you know, decrease your chance of being hospitalized or dying. So we are seeing that over and over and over again. The hospital systems are strained right now. Very, very strained. So get vaccinated if you can. The second message is those of you that got vaccinated early on in this, please exercise caution at this point. So, you know, there is a greater chance that you can get a breakthrough infection, especially if you're older. So be very careful. So wear your mask when you're going out. Try to avoid folks, um, you know, with uh, large crowds. Wash your hands and keep your distance at this point. And let's get people boosted up and let's get these cases down so that we can, um, you know, recover a little bit. Man, that sounds great. For Cobb and Douglas Public Health District Director Janet Meemark, I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications for Douglas County. Thank you for joining us for this COVID update. Thank you.